Hello, welcome to the next round of Top X video. Today we're gonna to be talking about top 15 commons and uncommons from this set. Three honorable mentions. Some of these top X slots do have some multiples in the slots because it's more talking about a certain archetype. Um, so they might have like overlap. So keep that in mind. But I overall, I think there is a lot of decent cards from the uncommons and commons that you should maybe consider picking up as a playset, put them in your collection because you might have use for them down the road. So that is the point of this video. Let's get into it and break it down. So going into the honorable mentions, Cheeky House Mouse, pretty adorable. One mana, two one, pretty okay stats. Uh, squeak by is maybe enough of a reason to want to play this over the some of other options that, the, that are one mana two ones so target creature gets plus one plus one it can't be blocked by creatures of power three or greater so that's kind of a nice little uh, combat pre-combat trick that you maybe you can get in a decent amount of damage so if somehow you target a creature that has it where pow creatures powered two or less can't block then basically only three power creatures. No, power three or greater. Yeah, so if you have a, if you, if you have this targeted creature that states that it can't be blocked naturally by creatures power two or less, this would just make it unblockable. And a pump spell. Interesting. We have a Embrith veteran. It's a knight, which is quite relevant, and a human. One red, two one. You may sacrifice this and give target creature the hero roll. Which basically is whenever this creature attacks, if it has three toughness or less, put a counter on it. So that can help a small creature get bigger. And the last card I want to talk about is Monstrous Rage. There is, you know, like Titan, um, some, what is it? Titan something. It's one red, three plus, target creature gets plus three, plus one. And, you know, also gets Scry one. So Titan Strength, maybe that's it. Um, but this one I like better, honestly. Target creature gets plus two and oh until end of turn. And then that creature gets a monster roll token. So instead of scry, you get trample. So that sticks around. So I really like the fact that this card gives you your creature a permanent plus one, plus one, and trample boost. So this might actually... The card that I'm going to try this in is Boros Heroic. That might be the card... That's going to be the deck that I'm going to try this card in. So if you have any other ideas for this card, let me know down in the comment section. And let's get into the top 15 portion of this list. Number 15 on my list is Toadstool Admirer. One green, one one, ward two, which is the main reason why I'm interested in this card. It's an oof. And of course you could pay for and give it a counter. It's not really relevant text. Now where I'm gonna try this at this season, it's going to be a green-white Bogles list. The one thing that I think the deck struggles with is not having the second one-drop hex-proof guy. I'm going to see how how bad is the Ward 2 in comparison to hex-proof. If we can get enough of a, a tempo swing in our favor, then maybe that Ward 2 is just, you know, not ba that bad, right? So that's kind of what I want to try because the one of the main problems you have is you basically mold down till you have a one drop that has any kind of relevant text on it. So it may be having eight, you know, semi pseudo bogle might be enough to let this deck shine. And of course I'm going to be playing it in Selesnia. I'm trying to make it where it's budget friendly. So under a hundred dollars. So that's my goal this season. This should be one of the, I think, the deck I feature the first week of the new season. So expect this deck relatively soon. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's get to number 15, 14 on my list. So number 14 on my list is a double duo. They're both fairies. One drops, one one's flying. One surveils two. I mean, surveils one when it ETBs. And you, and you could also, if it's in your graveyard, you could pay two in a black Exile it, draw a card, lose a life. So that's pretty reasonable fairy for a one drop. I'm not sure if it's better than the other real slight other options we have. Uh, the other sprite, I kind of think it's interesting because it comes down ETBs, tap a creature. 
Okay, I guess you have to pay two to make it where it taps the creature and put a stun counter on it. The name is that's that's definitely worse than I thought. It's a fairy and a wizard. I don't know why I was thinking it was when ATBs tap target creature if and you pay you may pay two and put a stun counter on it. I think that would have been a better you know card, of course, but that's fine. Three mana, one one. Tap a creature, put a stun counter on it. Maybe that's relevant enough for the fairies list. Um, but I think Dream Thief is probably more reasonable just because in this deck, you do want to actively play a fairy on turn one, which is why I think the cards we're going to talk about later might actually be better. So keep that in mind when we get there. But this is my number 14. Let's get number 13 on my list. Back for seconds. Two and a black for sorcery. Bargain. If you bargain, you basically you return up to two target creatures from your graveyard to your hand. If you bargained, you may put one of those mana vet with a mana value four or less onto the battlefield instead of putting into your hand. So where this card I think could show up only in one spot, and that is somehow there's a world where you you have your blood tithe harvesters blood tokens sitting around. You sack that. Cast this, get back Shelly. That is probably the only play pattern this card's going to see play. And if it doesn't do that, then this card is going to be a flop. So that's why there's some cards like in the 12th and 11th slot that are above this. Because I think they have a better shot of generically being stronger. This one, I think, really depends on Shieldred and the deck itself wanting this card to work with, like I said, with Blood Type Harvester, and then stuff like that. So, let's get number 12 on my list. Candy Trail. One, ETBs for an artifact clue. Uh, scry two, immediately. I mean, pay two, sacrifice it, gain three life, and draw a card. There probably is a world where there is a artifact.deck that once just wants a one drop, and since it comes down immediately, Scrys 2 is actually kind of relevant on turn 1. Um, Witch Witching Well was the card from the other Eldrain, but it was a blue card. So this is generic in any kind of artifact deck. You don't necessarily have to have blue in your opening hand. So I think that opens this card up even more than Witches, Witching of uh, Well. So, like I said, it's still Scrys 2. And then you may pay two, draw a card, and gain three life. So that's also pretty relevant if you're a artifact-based strategy that's more mid-rangey. The three life will matter. So if you're like a Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge deck, Karn, um, the uh, Scion of Urza, you're making Constructs. So like if there's some sort of mid-range artifact matters deck, this is a decent one drop, I think. Let me know if you think this card is a total bomb and a miss. Maybe I'm overvaluating this card. I want to know all that down in the comment section. Let's get into number 11 on my list. Shrouded Shepherd, one in a white. When it ETBs, target creature you control gets plus three, plus two, plus two until in a turn. A two mana, two, two. Not a terrible static creature. And it also could pump your creature before combat. Also, there's Cleave Shadows, which is one in a black. Creature your opponent controls get minus one, minus one to win a turn. So uh, that could get rid of small X1s and shrink their stuff small enough to maybe where you can get through a 1-1, one, one, which would become a 3-3, three, three, potentially, or a 1-1 one, one, trading with another 1-1. One, one. So I think this card is pretty reasonable. I think it's not necessarily as open, you know, like a lot of decks want this kind of effect. But the ones that do... You definitely want to consider picking this up, adding it to your collection. It's one of those cards when I think it's good. It's really good. And of course, you have Lucky Clover. And that could help you um, copy the Cleave Shadow. So maybe you can get minus two, minus two. And it's a two-mana Partial Wrath Sweeper. You can, like I said, you can keep stacking it. Hopefully this card does make some sort of impact in the format. But let's get number 10 on my list is Tough Cookie. One in a green, 
ETBs make a food. It's a 2-2. So I like the fact that it comes down, makes two tournaments, both food. So it, it's, it's really good in a food matters deck. Two in a green target non-creature artifact becomes a 4-4 to win a turn. So you can turn that food into a 4-4. And then, of course, you may pay the food thing by paying two, sack this thing, and you gain three life. So I think this card is actually pretty reasonable. It's an artifact creature. So if you care about artifacts for Delirium or something, it makes two things on the battlefield. So like for two mana, it does a lot. So I really like this card. So yeah, let's get to number nine on my list. Up the Beanstalk. One in a green. When when this ETBs or or whenever uh, you cast a, a spell with mana value five or greater, draw a card. So on its face value, it's one in a green. Comes down, draw a card. It could help with bargain mechanic but in pioneer it's i don't think it's as strong right i could be completely wrong here but it's not like modern where you have evoke elementals and stuff like that but if there is a world where you do you can cast a lot of five drops so maybe model green wants this they do have cavalier they do have cityscape leveler um maybe there's enough reason to do that and draw an extra card um, so basically be like, instead of the invasions, sometimes I played, they have played the invasion. Maybe this is a decent, like one, two of just so you can, you know, I said, drop a cab, draw a card. If you have a key or you draw two, which is pretty good at keep just turning through your deck. So I think that might be like the best case scenario in pioneer, but if there is something I missed, let me know. Let's get number eight on my list. Torch the Tower. A single red bargain. This thing does two damage to target creature or planeswalker, so it's a strictly better um, card. I can't remember what it's called from Innistrad set, um, which basically replaced Magma Spray. So this is just a strictly better card of that. And of course, they still. Any permanent dealt damage by this would get exiled still, so it doesn't lose that mode. Um, if this spell was bargain and does three damage and you scry one. So why this is so low on my list is because both of those cards, the bargain and the the uh, newer card, none of them see any play in Pioneer. So I'm hesitant to believe that even a slightly stricter, better version of that is going to see a lot of play. Maybe there is a world where their bargain mechanic is actually pretty decent. And this is basically just an instant speed strangle. At that point, it definitely will see play. So there is this card. is like on the bridge of being either like a very good card or a very niche card. That's probably not going to see enough constructive play, but I don't know where it fits in there. This could fit into fires of invention, right? So if you cast, your first spell for free, cast this, sack fires, and then maybe at that point you cast your use your mana for an actual spell. So that could be a possibility as well. I don't know. Let's get into number seven on my list. Number seven is a duo on my list. They are the uncommons, uh, legendary creatures in the set. Ruby, I think, is going to be decent in bar class. So... It probably already has a home, and the fact that it became, it can become a 3-4 is pretty good, and it comes down and is a ritual, right? Because it, bar class reduces the cost to making this a free mana, hasty 1-2, and then it immediately adds mana, so that's quite powerful. Now, if fairies are going to be a thing in Pioneer at all, Dreaming Duel seems like a decent payoff. Uh, Demir, Flying, Flash, whatever another fairy ETBs, you, each opponent loses a life. There is no fairy lord for some reason in this set. Maybe we get it when we go back to Lauren. But until then, fairies might have okay amounts of stuff going on to maybe be like at the power level of rogues. But we're going to find out this season where we're going to play fairies. See how it works out. Let's get number six on my list. Number six, 
Aretti's Tempting Apple. Four drop artifact food. ETBs gain control of target creature until end of turn. It gains haste, untap it. So, Karn, I don't know if Karn would ever want this in any particular matchup. Maybe against the mirror. So, you get this with your Karn, play it, take their cityscape level or smash back. Maybe that's a relevant line. Um, maybe the other thing is against aggressive decks. You want to just play this sack at gain three life, which is basically six mana gain three. Not the best of modes, but outside of that, you're never going to use the last mode. And if you do play this in a Karn base deck, who cares about draining your opponent for three or dealing three to your opponent? Not really relevant ever, probably, because if you're playing this card, you're probably going to deal a lot of damage that get that one turn. And uh, three damage is just... Not necessary, probably. Let's get number five on my list. Number five on my list is Ice Out. One and two, blue, bargain. If you bargained it, it becomes counter spell. This could be decent. I don't know a deck that's a control deck that has artifacts, enchantments, or tokens. So if you could break this, you get the bargain actually to be playable, just like the previous bargain card then I think this card is going to be really good in the format. But <clears throat> keep in mind, there we, we've had that one two, artifact one where you tap an artifact. That doesn't see any play. So clearly there's not really a world where artifacts and control matter, right? That doesn't seem to be a thing. Because if it did, that card would see be, be seeing play right now in Pioneer. It's not. So <clears throat> enchantments and tokens. The only one that I think that could capitalize off this is, of course, is um, um, is it creativity? That's the only one that makes tokens like the little goblin, treasure, you know, clues. So maybe that's where this card maybe could shine. But even then, like, it makes a lot of artifact tokens. So if it really wanted this effect, it would be playing the artifact one. But... Maybe the bargain is better than just tapping an artifact. I don't know. We will see. Let's get into number four on my list. Now, this card is probably going to see more play in EDH, but two and a white to short target non land tournament. Its controller makes a 1 1 human. Not bad. It's not bad removal overall. I said, I don't know if it's going to show up in Pioneer. Is three mana for a destroy anything? Is that good enough for Pioneer? Um, where mana efficiency does matter, but does maybe this is a cyborg all star? Maybe you have a couple copies on the side. You could bring this in, kill a grease fang if you want. Um, give him a one one, or maybe this, you know, kills an, a problematic enchantment, planeswalker, something like that. So like it can be quite versatile. Now I don't know what this card is going to do in Pioneer. Like I said. Is typically like modern, where you try to want to be mana efficient. Three mana for a removal spell is quite high. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Let's get to number three on my list. So now we have a three trio of all the fairy payoffs. Each one of these, I think, is constructed playable. Earlier, I, t I was talking about you want to be playing a fairy on turn one 99% of the time. So you could argue that Thoughtseize is better in the fairy stack, but the, uh, that one problematic thing I think I see with that is it would make you want to play the Thoughtseize turn one, which in a tempo deck, you really want to get a one drop down and start the beat down process. So your best curve is a one drop fairy, turn two, play a land, uh, Ego Drain or Thoughtseize, play another fairy. That seems like a decent line. Turn three is when you start leaving up spell stutter with fencing to maybe remove a small creature on the opponent's side of the board. Um, which in fairies, I think fairy fencing is better than um, fatal push, which is why these are both here. So if in Pioneer, fairies become a thing in Pioneer, I think you gotta pick up all of these, like four of each of these. I, 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 I do think Ego Brain Drain is going to maybe be a two of in the main board, two in the side. 
uh, because you do run counter spells. This card is not good with counter spells because I mean you definitely you want them to commit mana with counter spells so you can counter it and exhaust their mana. If you discard them, then you basically are allowing them to play a card on their turn, not countering it. You're not necessarily you're not being reactive or proactive. So they're just not good together. Um, so spell stutter is potential mana leak, maybe um, two pay for four. So it scales with fairies. Is it better than the flyer counter spell? Um, where basically it's one in a blue counter target spell has to pay four if you control a flyer. That is up for debate, which is better. And like I said, fairy fencing, I think is better than fatal push in fairies. One black instant speed target creature gets minus three, minus three. So it can get, it can scale up and get a five drop depending on how much mana you pay into it. Like I said, I think ego burnt drain is good and better, potentially better than thought sees in this deck. Um, maybe you want to have two drains main three thoughts each side, right? So if there is a matchup where you don't want to play a fairy turn one, you can bring in Thoughtseize. I think what I like about Drain, like I said, is it encourages you to play the deck correctly. So that is my argument. If you could argue with me all you want down in the comment section, I will respond. So let's get to number two. Number two on my list is not dead after all. A black target creature when a... This creature, when it dies, turns to the battlefield, put a wicked roll token on it. It basically gives the creature plus one, plus one. And when it, when the ore dies, your opponent loses a life. Strictly the best effect of these undying quote unquote cards. So it's going to immediately show up in modern. Um, if you're looking for this effect in Pioneer, this probably is your go to right out of the gate. So this is definitely the best of this type of fact. Pick up a copies, four of them. It's worth it to have in your collection. Let's get into number one brand new card from Eldrain for Pioneer. Slide a hand. Um, one blue, look top two, put one in the hand, one in the bottom. If they ever print one of these that's like consider, look top two, put one in hand, put one in the graveyard. Look out, that would be super strong. In the combo decks, I think this is better than Opt. So, like, in Phoenix, this is probably better than Opt. Most of the time, they rarely cast those cards at instant speed. It's always on their turn, right before in main phase one. So, Slide of Hand is probably better, of course, than Opt. So, that way, you can look to find whatever one that guarantees the next spell. Instead of looking at the top one, it might not be a card that you necessarily don't want, but it's castable. Um, it's better to look at the, the the card underneath it too. So that way you know if you, which one's better in general. So the last thing you wanna do is put that to the bottom and draw land. So <laughs> that is top 15 brand new staples, commons and uncommons from Wilds of Eldrain. Now we got one more video to go. My, I might be losing my voice soon. Cause I've recorded all of these simultaneously and man, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> so until next time, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you let me know what cards you enjoy the most and I'll talk to you soon.